Good morning. I'm John Kosar of Asbury Research and Asbury Investment Management with your Daily Five. These are my top five charts for today, Thursday, July 16th, in just 10 minutes. Our first slide is what we call the game board. It's simply a chart of the S&P 500 with all the important levels above and below the market. Uh, financial asset prices, in particular stock prices, uh, stock indexes, they tend to move from level to level. The market has a memory and um, knowing where these levels are give you an opportunity to not only read the indicators, but manage your expectations as to how big the next move could be, up or down. So let's have a look at them. <clears throat> so this is the S&P going back one year, and we have the 200-day moving average, which is generally considered the major trend. That's an orange. And we've got the blue moving average is the 50-day, generally stated as the minor. Uh, that's the solid blue line. and um, the most important takeaway here is the sideways activity um, over the past four to six weeks. You can see we've been bumping up against the 200 day moving average from up above um, as the market is trying to decide if it's strong enough to start a new major uptrend as defined by that average. So it tested it once in early June, tested it again at the end of June, and now we've risen and we're bumping up against the resistance level, which is 32.15 to 32.33. That's based on the January 31st low and also the peak that we made just over the past month. So we're locked in this real tight little range and we're kind of knocking on the door of trying to get above it. If we do get above it, there's really nothing upstairs, so to speak, until we get the 33.94. That is the all-time high that we made in February, right before the bottom fell out. Then if you look underneath the market, I like to lump that 200-day moving average, which is 30-30, with 29.55. That's the green um, highlights there at the April 29th high. So I look at 30-30 to 29.55 as major support. Underneath there, you've got 27.25 area, which is the March and June of 2019 lows. And then all the way down, the... Um, you know, Dash blue line at 25.38 is the March 2009 uptrend line that we broke through just for a, just for a week or two uh, back at the worst of March, and now we're obviously well above again. So those are the levels. Uh, <clears throat> so now we're going to take a little bit closer look and see if there's any chart patterns here. And there is. There's one that targets another 4% rise. Um, the pattern is in the S&P, but there are coincident patterns in the SOX index, uh, which is semiconductors. Uh, there are coincident patterns, corroborating patterns, let's call them, in some of the uh, sector ETFs. So the pattern here highlighted in blue is one of investor indecision, again, as the market was, as the S&P 500, rather, was trying to get and stay up above the 200-day moving average. That kind of coiling action is investors collectively pulling in their horns and not wanting to get too far outside of the range because they're afraid they're going to get their head chopped off. Well, you finally got that upside breakout on July 2. You see it in green. And that targets a move up to 33.40, which is another 4% higher than where we are right now. The caveat to that is in order for that target to stay good, we need to stay up above the top of the investor indecision area, which is 3043. And we already know that the 200 day is right under there at 3030. So if we can't get to 3340 and we roll back down through that 3043 area, that tells you the market may be done. We, we might be rolling over. So this basically takes that larger picture from the game board and gives you a little smaller context. The next thing we're going to look at is market internals. We spent a lot of time at Asbury Research looking at market internals because price isn't as reliable an indicator, frankly, as it was 10 years ago uh, because of all the algorithmic trading, uh, which is 80% of the trading volume every day. Um, 
just this past week, the S&P is up 30, then it's down 30, then it's back up 30 by the end of the day. And then some news comes out, it's down 30. Uh, it's very easy to chase your tail on these markets. So we want, so I wanted to build an indicator that was gonna be a lie detector test for the market. So this is my 40th year, I've been doing this a long time. I took all of my favorite tactical indicators. Tactical for us is 21 business days. And we back tested them together separately. What I wanted was to kind of build a team of indicators because as you know, all indicators, everyone asks folks like us, well, what's your favorite indicator? Nothing works all the time, which is why having one favorite indicator, in my view, is not a good idea. You want to get a battery of indicators that act like a team to kind of pick each other up you know, like a hockey team of six people, you know, and one guy, you know, the puck gets by, by him, you know, there's another guy coming around and backing him up. That's how I look at this Asbury six. So there are six metrics here. Only one is strictly to do with the price. That's the rate of change on the S&P 500 up top. The other five are what I call secondary indicators, asset flows in the spider, um, corporate bond spreads, relative performance comparison, market breadth. So you can see all of these are green. That means they're all positive. And these dates in here tell you um, the actual date that that particular metric turned positive. So right now, the A6 has been positive since July 2nd, collectively as a team. Um, it's currently hitting on all cylinders. So that tells me that the breakout that I saw in number two is <clears throat> got some internal horsepower behind it on a very tactical basis, but it's positive. Uh, the next one, chart number four, is volatility. Volatility is another tactical tool of ours that we bring out when appropriate. It's kind of like building a house. You can't uh, use a hammer to build a whole house. Um, you need other tools. So you know which tool to use at which time. And when the market is at an inflection point here like it is now, Volatility is really important to us. So here's the VIX. The VIX up top in, uh, in its 21 day moving average. Again, we're looking at a bunch of different indicators for the same lens. If I'm looking at a 13 day here and a 21 day there, um, it's um, indicator salad. It doesn't mean anything. You need to look through the same, kind of know what your time frame is and look through the same lens at different indicators. To us, this is how you use these quantitative and tactical metrics. Um, underneath, um, bottom pattern, um, pa um, panel rather, is the S&P 500. So you can see the, the VIX moved down below the 21-day uh, moving average on uh, July the 1st. That was one day before the breakout that we saw on number two out of the pattern after we held a 200-day moving average. So you've got the VIX down underneath the 21-day moving average, it's a monthly trend of um, complacency, um, increasing complacency, which is good for the market on a tactical basis. As long as the VIX stays below 3091, this particular metric stays in place and it is conducive on a day-to-day -day basis for us getting up to that 4% move higher per uh, chart number two. Finally, there's always a little bit of bad news and um, this is no different. Um, once you start looking past the tactical and into the strategic, which for us is 63 business days or one business quarter, we're seeing a bunch of indicators that are just telling us to not be buying stocks and leaving the country um, for three months um, or you know, getting away from our screens for three months. This chart that I chose for you today is one of those um, in its futures trader sentiment. This is actually our spin on um, uh, Jake Bernstein's DSI or Daily Sentiment um, Index. Jake Bernstein is a uh, uh, very respected uh, futures market analyst that's been around forever. Um, <clears throat> so what this is showing you right now is futures trader sentiment in the S&P 500 is very bullish. Um, above 81% bullish is what we call the most bullish extreme in our version of this indicator. You can see it's even starting to turn down a little bit if you look inside the red circle. Going back across the chart, I wanted to show you what has happened previous instances of this because 
This is not a timing indicator. You don't say, oh, it's most bullish, you know, let's sell everything uh, or go short. That's not what this is for. This is like a baseball game telling us that we're in the eighth inning um, of a baseball game. Um, a baseball ga in game it usually goes nine innings. Sometimes it goes 10 or 11 or 12. This tells us that we're getting near the end of the game that started on March 23rd with the move higher off the lows. Uh, you can see all of these different instances here are different. We peaked in the beginning of February on this indicator, and this indicator started to move lower even as we made a higher high, um, and eventually it, it led into the big move down. You can see July of 2019 was kind of right there. It was close to when the market turned. May of 2019 was weeks early. September of 2018 was maybe a month or five weeks early. So this is not a selling tool, but this tells me within the context of my tactical expectation to go a little bit higher um, in the S&P 500, this is telling me to not get too much over my skis and don't expect too much because this tells us that we're probably in, again, the eighth inning of that ball game that started at the end of March. So there you have it. Things look good on a tactical basis. You need to be careful on more of a strategic basis because there are some indications that we're getting a little bit over our skis as we move into the fall. Um, there's your daily five. Thanks for watching. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment, and if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.